Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Blockcast with Simon and Will. I have my co-host, Will, here. How are you, mate? Doing great today, Simon. What are we talking about? So today we are talking about how to take profits. I think it's uh, definitely something that's lacking in the industry and people knowing what to do. Because I think everyone kind of knows what to do when buying. Like, Will, if I told you what's a great strategy for getting into crypto, what would you probably tell people? Big one is dollar cost average all the way down. That way you are sure of getting the best price when the market reaches bottom. And then you can start to slowly ease away from uh, putting money into the market when it starts to go up. What do you think about that, Simon? Absolutely. I mean, dollar cost average, I think you'll hear everybody always talking about that. The other one you often hear is buy the dip, which is probably not quite as good as dollar cost average, but everybody knows to do that. But when it comes to actually when to take profits, I don't think people are that good at it. So what do you reckon? What's your thoughts on what's the good strategies for taking profits? That's a big one, Simon. Taking profit. The first thing people do is holding, but you can actually optimize your crypto earnings by knowing exactly when to exit the market. So the first thing is to recognize market cycles and to realize that the market will never go up forever, neither down forever. And once you know that, uh, I think you're in part to take the right action by first recognizing when the market is hot or cold. Yeah, I agree with you there, mate. But I'm actually going to disagree with you on that one. And I think this is going to be quite controversial. I disagree with HODL. You know, the good old crypto saying, hold on for dear life. I actually think it's a terrible strategy. You mm. ask anybody who's bought an altcoin last year and they've HODLed it. They've HODLed it down 95%, 99%. I reckon HODL is actually hurting the industry because it's bringing new people in and all they do is hold that coin thinking and hoping and praying it's going to get back up. I think HODL is only a good strategy if you've got like a five year, 10 year kind of time horizon. And you're probably only talking about Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum too, simply because those are the two that I would only consider that probably still gonna be there in five, 10 years time. Anything else is really up for grabs. I don't really know that. So HODL, I think is a bad strategy. I don't think you should do it. I think you need to put a bit more sense into it because you can't watch your profits just disappear. That's a very good point, Simon. HODL works for tokens that have been around for a long time, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Altcoins, you're right. It's hard to tell whether something is going to last for the next two or three years. And it's really only worth having a HODL strategy for something that has proven itself over time. It has market presence and a lot of people are using it. For everything else, we probably want to think about taking profits at the right time. Yeah, and absolutely. And even like, remember, Bitcoin and Ethereum can go down 80% in bear markets. So even HODLing that is uh, not necessarily even got a short time horizon. I'll go on to my second thing that I think is a great thing to take profits, which I don't think people use enough which is having some target sell prices. I think someone should have at least three target sell prices for any coin they're buying. In fact, let's go back a step. If you're going to invest in crypto, you actually need to have a goal in mind at first. So you need to have a target of what you're actually trying to achieve. Then you need to know, well, what's your exit strategy before you get in? Which is why it's a good time to talk about now, because now it's probably a good time to start getting into the market, but then lay your foundations for when you get out. So that's why I say three target sell prices. The first one I'd probably say is a fairly low sell price if it's a low cap coin then you probably want to sell when you maybe double triple your money just to get your initial out because those low cap coins you never really know what they're going to do you really need to take your profits when they are available to you maybe you've got like something in the top 20 maybe you might stretch it out a little bit more that first take profit just because it's probably more likely to, to still be around and probably survive you know and be around for the full bull market then probably your second target price that's you know a bit more aggressive something that's you know past probably all-time highs but that's going to be where you want to probably sell the bulk of your portfolio. You know, this is when you've got that goal in mind. This is probably where you're selling and aiming to get most of the money that you're trying to achieve that goal with. So that's, you know, really trying to maximize your profits, uh, but also taking money off the table. And then the third one is probably more that outrageously high target. Maybe this is where you only keep about five, maybe 10% of your portfolio at the most for that blow off top, top try to capture that, because that can also be huge gains right at the end. But you don't want to risk holding on for that. There's kind of like four outcomes that can occur when you are taking profits. One is that the price goes up, you sell, and the price goes down. You're a genius. You sold the top. Mm. You're never going to do that. Nobody is ever going to do that. Second <laughs> scenario is price is going to go up. You're going to sell because it hits your target and the price keeps going up and you feel like an idiot because your sold is going to keep going up. Yeah. That's probably a likely scenario, but you've taken profits. You've got money in the bank. This is a good thing. Third scenario, if you understand the market cycle, it's going to go up, you're going to sell, price is going to go up, you're going to feel like an idiot, and guess what? We have a bear market and it crashes down. And now all of a sudden you're a genius again. So taking profits is always important. There is one other element that could occur, which is 
Price goes up, never hits your sell price. Price goes down. So this is the tough one that I think is also very important for people to have is that they need to have a line in the sand where they think, where do I not want this to go below? You know, where am I going to get out of the market? Um, goes back to my first rule that I said, which is don't hodl because you don't want to ride these up and ride them back down if your target price haven't been set. That's a really good point, Simon. So the price goes up, you sell, the price keeps going up and then it comes down again. You're a genius, you're right. But now what do you do when the price goes up but then it doesn't quite hit your target? Uh, what's the strategy there? Do you follow it up with a stop loss? What is the best way of managing this? I think this is something that a lot of people would like to know. It's a tough one, isn't it? And I guess you know we should just put in the caveat, this is not financial advice and everyone's gonna come up with their own ideas. Um, and this is why I kind of say you have three target sell prices. If you've got the first target sell price is quite low, then at least you're taking profits on the way you're getting money off the table and these are supposed to be you know fairly reasonably achievable targets um then if you've got your highest uh, target price and it doesn't reach that well maybe your line in the sand is when it comes down and hits that target price again then you go okay i think the market's turned i'm out of the market mm -hmm. maybe you do what you said maybe you want to put a stop loss in and at some point in time you know tw you know if it drops 20 percent, 10 percent below uh the, the price maybe that's when you get out that's up to individuals the other option is is actually once it's over a target sell price you start dollar cost averaging out as well so over time you're slowly selling a small portion of your portfolio week by week that way again you're taking away the pressure of trying to hit these target prices you've hit in a range and then you can start slowly exiting the market as well let me stop you there quickly simon that's fairly new idea so a lot of people understand how to dollar cost average in but you mentioned dollar cost averaging out as the price is going up so could you dive a little bit deeper and explain to us how that works? Yeah, sure. So it's the same as dollar cost averaging in is that you're going to put $100 a week buying Bitcoin, whatever it is. It's the same on the exit out. You're going to sell $100 worth of Bitcoin at a certain price. Uh, the difference being is that when you're dollar cost averaging in, you're basically not caring about the price. Um, when you're exiting, you've kind of got to, wanted to have gone above a certain threshold price because, okay, now I'm comfortable that the market is in an area where I want to take profits. So same concept, set up a recurring sell of your crypto uh, once a week, once a day, once a month, whatever it is, and slowly exit the market that way. Again, it's taking pressure off you focusing on the price all the time. That makes a lot of sense, Simon. So that means that once the price reaches a certain threshold, once I sense that the market is a little bit hot, my personal rule is when the barber ta uh, starts talking about Bitcoin, I know it's time to exit. Uh, I think that's a good rule of thumb. But once it gets to a hot state, you, want, you just want to divest out of crypto. Now, what do you what do you get into? Do you just hold uh, US dollars? Do you convert it to something else called silver? Really good question that. And this is probably the thing that I did the worst thing at the end of last year. I took profits and what did I do? I went and bought more altcoins with it. Really dumb idea. <laughs> I think you should definitely be looking at either moving into stable coins or maybe you really, you know, want to just keep stacking your, your, your Bitcoin. Maybe you want to move to Bitcoin, maybe you want to move to Ethereum, maybe you want to bring it back to Fiat. Those are probably better options for Fiat and stable coins, I feel, because this is taking profits, keep it on the sidelines, have that money for whatever you want. If you've achieved your goals, what was your goal? You wanted to buy the car, you wanted to buy the house, whatever it is, take that money off the table and go and do that. So I think when you start exiting the market, you need to have that written plan of stable coins, Bitcoin, or fiat. Don't go reinvesting it. And it's probably a good idea to hold several different stables because uh, it's one thing to hold fiat, but then in terms of stable, they're still fairly new. They're not much older than 10 years old, so they don't really have a long history. So if you're gonna hold stables in crypto form, you probably wanna diversify them a little bit. So a little bit of USDC here, a little bit of DAI, maybe something else, uh, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've seen what can happen with, with so-called stable coins this year. So you definitely need to diversify. I mean, that's just a general rule of thumb that I have. I, I don't commit any more than 10% of my portfolio into any given strategy. So if I'm trying to earn, you know, yield on ETH, I only put 10% into one certain yield strategy. Same with my stable coins. If I'm trying to earn yield on my stable coins, I would only put 10% into any individual strategy. That's just my risk tolerance. I don't want to put, you know, all, all my eggs in the one basket and have smart contract failure or anything like that. So same thing goes with holding different stable coins. You mentioned something else that's really important. You said you mentioned feeling like a genius on one side and feeling like an idiot on another if the market goes the way you predicted. But then I think the key thing that you mentioned there is feeling. So the important thing about setting a strategy before you get into crypto is to make sure that it's as emotionless as possible. You set the strategy when you're not 
in crypto, you make a commitment to stick to it, ask your financial advisors, obviously, and then really try to follow that strategy as the market keeps going. And whether you win or lose, uh, make sure to remember in the long term, you're probably going to win as long as you're investing responsibly. Yeah, I do agree with you there. Like the emotions uh, obviously drive us so much. It's very hard to separate yourself from that when it's coming to your money and you've got a lot invested in it. That's why the plan really helps. You've got that strategy in place. It's going to help you act on that plan. Uh, but I, I would also say that a plan is like anything that you can change it as you go, but it's a conscious decision that you're changing your plan. If you want to detour from what your original plan was, that's fine. You're doing it consciously. If you are selling because the price has spiked down and you're afraid, that's using your emotions. If you're selling because it's doubled but didn't triple, again, you're using emotions. If it's hit your targets, that's fine. Uh, so having a plan is important. Sticking to the plan is also important. Modifying your plan if you want to is okay because it's a conscious decision to do it without emotions attached to it. I think the simple thing to end this on, mate, is that taking profits is a good thing. All right, well, let's say I think he's. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for another episode. Uh, thank you, Simon. Until next time.